I'm Jojo Kino and I'm a traveler, blogger, and photographer and I write travel tips for female travelers at travelingpetitegirl.com. This month's content is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to share about myself outside of being a travel blogger. I think it's important for you to know who I am if I'm going to be sharing guides and tips with you. So this video is going to be a life update and a mid-year check-in and it's a video that I want to do every half year. I'll share about what's going on in my life as a traveler, blogger, and business owner. I think it's a fun way for us to get to know each other and feel like we're chatting over drinks. And I want it to feel like we're friends and you get to have a peek into my life, my thought process, and learn something for yourself. I want my relationship with you guys to be a two-way conversation and you get to comment on my videos and emails knowing that I will get back to you. So grab a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, a cup of milk tea, whatever your drink of choice is and get comfy with me. My drink of choice right now is honey lemon tea. Hmm. Okay. Let's get started. Since this is my first life update episode, I thought I'd do an update of where my blog was when I started and where it is now. So I started my blog in September 2016 and it's April 2019 today. So my blog is about two years and eight months old. When I started, my goal was to post once a week. So if I stayed true to that, then I would have 119 posts today. I have 47. <laughs> and the reason for that was a few things. I got caught up in the rat race of Instagram and spent at least five hours a day creating content specifically for Instagram, engaging on Instagram pods, Telegram groups, WhatsApp groups, and paying for follow and unfollow services. And I did that with the goal of increasing my following and bringing traffic to my blog. Yes, my following did increase and my engagement increased too, but was it authentic? No. And did it bring traffic to my blog? very very little and here's why it didn't work number one spending five plus hours on instagram every day wasn't healthy number two it was not an efficient way to work if i wanted to make money from my blog number three i didn't know if my posts were connecting with my followers because most of my comments were from influencers and engagement groups i was in or generic comments from bots and the likes on my posts were inflated because of telegram like groups so I never got a true standing of my following and if they liked my content or not. So it became exhausting for me to post and I'd be lazy and post pretty pictures with half-assed captions and because of that, I felt like I was turning into the very people I didn't like on Instagram. That and spending at least five hours a day on Instagram also left me with less time to create content for my actual blog. It's true you don't need a huge social following to have a successful blog and I learned that the hard way. So the rem that I took a two month social media detox to clear my head and come back to myself then I unfollowed all the accounts that made me doubt myself as a blogger and or were sharing only surface level content then I left all the Instagram pods whatsapp groups and telegram groups and cleared out all the ghosts and bot followers I ended up losing about 2,700 followers, but that also means my following is 2,700 followers stronger. And now I only post one to two times a week. Not necessarily focusing on how pretty my pictures are, but more on sharing vulnerable stories with valuable lessons I've learned. Something that people could relate to without giving them FOMO. You know what I mean? And it's interesting that by doing that, my audience was back to being authentic and my posts were connecting with them much more. So my goal with Instagram now is to share behind the scenes of my blog and my life and to connect with readers and viewers of my content because most of them like to connect with me on Instagram. So if Instagram wasn't bringing me traffic, what was? It was Pinterest. I only spent a few hours on it per month, but it was the reason why at least 90% of traffic was visiting my blog. Instagram was at least 14% with at least five hours a day of work. So I focused on Pinterest, at least pinning 20 to 30 pins per day. And in two months, I was able to grow my following from 1,000 to 1,200 followers, my monthly pin viewers from 55,000 to 330,000, and my blog traffic from 3,700 to 5,700 unique visitors per month. So I'm really happy with that and not only is it growing at a steady rate, it's also growing authentically. The next update I want to share with you is something really exciting and I can't wait for it to premiere. I haven't really talked about it much before but I teamed up with a Filipino TV network in Guam to create a travel show for Pinoy's in Guam and it's called 
Traveling Fatigue Girl with yours truly as your host. I haven't really shared much because it's under wraps, but so far we filmed three episodes and one live episode. Each episode features a specific province to bring more Balikbayans to Philippines and inspire them where to go and what to do there. So far we filmed in Pampanga, Iloilo, a star cruise ship, and broadcasted the Dinagyang Festival live from Iloilo. And though our focus is to air on TV to Filipinos in Guam, we will also be posting the videos on YouTube for all other Balik Bayans to watch too. So I'll update you guys on when that is once we have a date. And another new project I'm working on for you guys is creating and selling my first product, an online course. I'm actually taking an online course right now to learn how to create an online course. And I'm not exactly clear on what my course will be about, but I'll ask you guys when the time comes. But it might be about how to start a profitable blog or YouTube channel within a certain timeline. Because I've been blogging for a few years and I've made so many mistakes, I wish I had all the info I needed when I started, so I want to help others who want to blog get their foundations covered as soon as they start. I'm still in the topic exploration phase, so I'll let you know what it ends up being. I know a lot of you guys want to blog and vlog too. Okay, so the last topic is about my love life. Last week, I shared about my traumatic dating history that involved abuse. And I want to share where I am with that now, how my dating life is like currently, and if I still get affected. And this is for my viewers who are in the same boat as me. Especially since abuse is not a conversation so openly talked about, I thought I'd share my experience to open up more opportunities for conversations and awareness. So if you watched my previous video, I talked about how much I hated men, how I never felt safe around them, and how I had to date them in order to not be angry at them anymore. <laughs> well, after ending a two-year relationship with the guy I mentioned in the video, I found myself dating again. And this time, I ended up appreciating men and felt really safe around them. They treated me so well, they took me out, listened to me, made sure I was safe once I got home, and I think this is largely because of how I hold myself up today and my very strict process of choosing who to date. And I knew if things didn't work out in my dating life, well, that was okay because everything else in my life was going great and I didn't feel the need to be in a relationship. I just wanted to get reacquainted with dating because I felt rusty. So right now, I'm in a healthy relationship with an amazing guy who lives in Okinawa. And after a year and a half of getting to know each other long distance, we decided to take the next step, which was to live together. So because I work remotely and he doesn't, I moved in with him from Guam and I'm now in our place in Okinawa. How we met was during the last hours of his work trip in Guam and after that we stayed connected. We had our first date in Thailand which was a really intense 10 days but we really got to know each other. Then we started dating long distance and I didn't see him until five months later. To be honest when I met him I was attracted to him but not if that makes sense. I thought he was just a guy trying to get into my pants and because I was wary and wanted to be safe, I never gave him my real name or my number. But with my nickname, he tried hard to look for me on social media and eventually found me. And then a month later, that's when we had our first date in Thailand. So before that, I took the time to get to know everything I could about him. Asking him all sorts of questions, observing how we talked, how he answered, and even looking through his old photos on Facebook for any red flags. All I found were his email pics as a teenager. <laughs> As for the after effects of abuse, I don't really get triggered as much as before and I definitely don't get triggered as bad as before, like panic attacks and such. The thing with the after effects or PTSD is you don't really know what will trigger you until you get triggered. And it doesn't matter how many years down the line it was from your trauma, you can still get triggered. So when that happens, you might think you've never recovered or maybe you took a step back in your recovery. But the truth is, when you're recovering from trauma, triggers will still happen. It will just happen less over time. And it's about striving for progress in your recovery, not for perfection. And that's the funny thing with mental health recovery. You think you're getting worse, but really you're getting better. And it's really hard to put that into perspective when you're in the middle of all of it. So the best thing to do is to be generous to yourself and to trust in the process Process of you moving forward. So my abuse happened to me five years ago and just last week my boyfriend made lighthearted jokes that ended up triggering me. I didn't know those jokes were triggers so I reacted, then I apologized, he apologized, and we agreed that instead of being quiet I would communicate 
much more openly when I get triggered and he would make sure not to cross those boundaries of whatever those triggers were. Open communication is now the new normal and because of that, I'm not used to it, but it's a learning process. So those are the bigger things happening in my life. What's happening with yours? Let me know in the comments. So as a check-in, I invite you to take a moment to see where you're at with your life right now. Are you sticking with the resolutions you made in New Year's? Have you taken action on projects like you said you would? Is there fear holding you back from what you want to do? If there is, how can you work with that? Take some time to think about it. Do you have the support system to set yourself up to do what you're supposed to do? Do you feel like, yeah, I'm in a good place right now or oh crap, I'm way behind and I have a lot of catching up to do. So let me know in the comments where you're at. This is a two-way conversation. I want to get to know you, what you're up to and what your dreams are. Thank you for listening to my life update and please like my video and subscribe to my channel for more personal videos like this. This is the next video I have for you next week. It's gonna be a good one. I love you guys. Don't be a stranger. Travel safe and I'll talk to you next week. Bye!